Hi, my name is Aishi Jang, and today I'll be talking about the four emergent properties of water. They are cohesion, moderation of temperature, the versatility of water as a solvent, and the floating of ice. Cohesion is the phenomenon where like molecules stick close together because of intermolecular bonds. Here, water molecules stay close together due to hydrogen bonding. And if you remember, hydrogen bonding is a concept that we covered in a previous video on water and polar covalent bonds. Cohesion plays a major role in the transport of water and dissolved nutrients in plants. As you know, water has to be transported upwards against the force of gravity. So how does cohesion help with this? Well, as water molecules evaporate from the leaves of the plants, it pulls the water molecules underneath it upwards. Adhesion, which is the cling between two different substances, also plays a role in this. Here, water is able to cling to the cell walls by hydrogen bonding, and this also helps counter the pull of gravity. Related to cohesion is the concept of surface tension, which is a measure of how difficult it is to break or stretch the surface of a liquid. Have you ever poured too much water into a glass? The water will stand above the rim. It's pretty cool. Water has a greater surface tension than most other liquids. At the interface between water and air is an ordered arrangement of water molecules, hydrogen bonded to one another and to the water below. Next, let's talk about the moderation of temperature by water. But first, let's talk about heat and temperature. Heat is a form of energy. And for a given body of matter, the amount of heat is a measure of the matter's total kinetic energy. What's kinetic energy? Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. And since atoms and molecules are always moving, they have kinetic energy. Now what's temperature? Temperature is an idea that's related to heat, but they're not the same thing. Temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy. Let's say we have two cubes. We have this tiny cube here, and then we have this huge cube right here. They are made up of the same material, blah, blah, blah. They have the same temperature. Now, the only difference between the two cubes is the volume. Now, since this cube is much bigger than this cube here, even though they have the same temperature, this cube will have much more heat because it has a greater volume. Temperature is usually measured in degrees Fahrenheit, Celsius, and Kelvins. Heat is usually measured in joules, calories, or kilocalories. What's special about water? Well, water has a very high specific heat. Specific heat is defined as the amount of heat that must be absorbed or lost for one gram of a substance to change its temperature by one degree Celsius. Water specific heat is one calorie per gram per degree Celsius. Now you might be thinking, wow, what a convenient number. Well, that's because the definition of calorie is the amount of heat it takes to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. Now let's do an example. Let's say I have one kilogram of iron and one kilogram of water. Iron has a lower specific heat than water. Now, I give both of these blocks 10,000 calories of heat. Which do you think is going to increase in temperature the most? Iron will have a greater increase in temperature compared to water because it has a lower specific heat. So it only needs it needs less heat than water in order to increase in temperature. Why does water have such a high specific heat? Again, it has to do with hydrogen bonding, like many of water's other properties. Heat must be absorbed in order to break hydrogen bonds, and whenever hydrogen bonds form, 
heat is released. A calorie of heat causes a relatively small change in temperature because a lot of the heat is used to disrupt these hydrogen bonds before water molecules can even begin moving faster. And when there is a decrease in temperature, well, hydrogen bonds can form, and this releases more heat, so this causes only a slight decrease in temperature. What's the significance of water's high specific heat? Well, a large body of water can absorb and store a huge amount of heat from the sun during the daytime and during the summer while only warming up a few degrees. And then at night, the water can gradually cool and warm the air. This can happen during the winter as well. And this is the reason why coastal regions generally have milder climates than inland regions. The high specific heat of water also helps stabilize ocean temperatures, allowing for marine life. And as well, most organisms are made up of mostly water, so the high specific heat allows the organisms to maintain a relatively stable body temperature. In addition to a high specific heat, water also has a high heat of vaporization, which is defined as the quantity of heat a liquid must absorb for one gram of it to be converted from the liquid to gaseous state. And for the same reason that water has a high specific heat, it also has a high heat of vaporization relative to most liquids. To evaporate one gram of water at 25 degrees, about 580 calories of heat is needed, nearly double the amount needed to vaporize a gram of alcohol or ammonia. Let's consider an example of the significance of water's high heat of vaporization. Let's say you're boiling a pot of water, and then you, know, you have a decent amount of water vapor above the pot. Accidentally, you stick your hand above the pot. Now, as the water vapor touches your hand and condenses into the liquid form, a large amount of heat is released. Now, this causes a really bad burn. Water's high heat of vaporization is also, respons is also responsible for the effectiveness of evaporative cooling. For example, on a really hot day, a body of water is able to absorb a lot of heat from the sun while maintaining relatively cool temperatures. This is partly due to a lot of the energy being used to convert water from the liquid form to the gaseous form. This lesson will be continued on part two.